So after the absorbing test match in Adelaide, which saw the spinners do rather well, also the batsmen had to grind for their runs. We now turn our attention to Perth. It's going to be a fast and bouncy track and the fast bowlers are going to make merry. But for the batsmen, if you're a stroke maker, there are plenty of runs to be had. Talking about stroke makers, we're joined by one. Damien Martin joins us live right now from Australia. Also joining us, former India cricketer in Murli Karthik. And I should say that Murli would be rather happy today. I know, don't say that because he's a former spinner. I say that because of the way the pitch is looking. Let's quickly take a look at that pitch and he'd be happy because he is now a keen golfer. Would we have a look at that? That that should, you know, make the 18th hole at the Delhi Golf Club pretty proud. I mean, the grass there looks like looks like the golf course or a cricket pitch. Exactly. Nikhil, uh, good afternoon. Good morning to everyone. Uh, Mado, it's been a long time. I haven't seen you. Uh, but yeah, look, I've, I've got no idea about what that uh, ground looks like or feels like, but I'm pretty sure whatever you've shown me, mm. Nikhil, uh, tells me that uh, a tennis court, uh, Wimbledon would be proud <laughs> <laughs> or possibly the DLF golf course because the DGC right now is not in great shape. But having said that, um, I don't know, is it is it just uh, before the game that the, the wicket looks like that or is it going to be the same for the game as well? Uh, only. Tomorrow, we'll come to know. Yeah, I mean, I'll take that question to Damien. Damien, we've seen this and this happens across the globe that, you know, you, you see a lot of grass on the pitch on the eve of the match, but then when you actually call play, then the grass is shaved off. What do you expect to happen here? Well, it depends. When has that picture taken? It might have been a week ago, was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. This is this, is this morning. And, and the, this is a fresh picture this morning. There's one thing, though. It was Murali could turn the ball in any wicket, okay? Whether it's green, where there's no yeah. grass, so he's fine with that, okay? He's good. <laughs> but but this is this is a new, this is a new stadium, a new wicket, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's a drop-in wicket. So this this is the question that um, it's not the whacker. Yeah. Um, so it's a drop-in wicket. Um, that's the question for all teams now. How do you play it? Like obviously bat first, but yeah. there's going to be there's going to be some pace. There's going to be some bounce. Um, but it's one of those ones. Who knows? This, this is the first time a, a test match has been played there. Yeah. How is it going to react? What happens? Okay, uh, we've just got comments from Virat Kohli. He was asked about the pitch and, and Virat's come out and said that I hope that the grass is not shaved on the eve. He would want the grass to stay there. Uh, Karthik, do you think that's what pre-match sledging from Virat you'd suspect? <clears throat> no, I don't think so. You hmm. look at the way we have played across uh, the two countries which we have toured recently, Nikhil. Hmm. Uh, South Africa, we faced some difficult wickets. I think the batsmen and the bowlers especially, they've been brilliant. Right hmm. through the three overseas series, they've been really brilliant. Uh, when it comes to uh, taking everyone chin on, I think Virat Kohli has done that exceptionally well. Right. Uh, even in England, there were some really difficult tracks except for the Oval. So, mm. it's been a tough grind for the Indian team and that's one of the reasons. You also have to remember India has won up. Mm. India has got a better batting lineup compared to Australia, which I've been constantly saying. Um, uh, if some, sometimes people might say you don't compare errors. Yeah. But you look at the teams of the 90s and the 2000s. Australia A and Australia B could beat these senior Australian team and Marto, I think, is uh, proof of that, the kind of teams which they had. Yeah. Um, look, now they've got gaping holes, big, huge holes. Mm. Finch, is he an opener? Uh, and I think uh, the Indian bowlers would be licking their lips uh, if they give a pre uh, if they're presented a surface like that. So, I think mm. it'll play onto India's hands. And also, the, the Australian seamers. Uh, look tired, look jaded in that second innings. Mm -hmm. So, and they've they've already been mollycoddled and uh, cotton wrapped uh, before the test series. So, it's all it's all going India's way at the moment. Fingers mm -hmm. crossed. Okay, uh, the big question as we uh, raised right at the start of the program, will the grass stay or will it be removed? Now, that's the question best answered by the curator of the ground and this is what he had to say. Is it possible to give a drop-in pitch specific uh, characterizations the way that, for example, pitches like the Wacker and the Gabba have had? Um, it's very much about the clay, so we're, we're using the exact same clay. Um, so we use the same uh, recipe for bringing the wickets up here as what we do at the Wacker, and they play very similar. So yeah, we don't, we don't sort of try to do anything different here, we just try to keep it simple. All right, Damien, I'll come to you now to something that uh, Karthik said before we went to the curator soundbite. Uh, Australia finds itself in a very unusual position. You know, usually fast track, they'd be the happier of the two. But but at the moment, seems like, you know, the Indian batting lineup seems slightly stronger on paper, at least, compared to the Australian batting lineup. Is, is this then the best place for them to make a comeback and the conditions that are on offer? Well, the thing is, they have to make a comeback. I mean, what, what India has done is fantastic. When you, when you tour... 
a country, you want to be one nil up, and that's what India's done. And mm. I, I agree with Murali. I mean, mm. India's side right now is is better than Australia. A better right. batting lineup. Their bowling attack is good. They bowl quick. Um, you know, Coley, the way he leads the side is aggressive. Mm. We 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 struggled in the first Test match, and in in, in my era, I played in mm. the first Test match was crucial. You wanted to yeah. win that one, and and what Coley has done with India, they, they're one nil up. That, that makes huge pressure on Australia now going to mm. Perth. And this wicket is not the same wicket we've seen before. The Wacker, when I played, was we were guaranteed the win of the Wacker. It was just this wicket that we always won on. It was fast, mm. it was bouncy, sides couldn't bat there. But this this is a drop in wicket, so who knows? And I think, as Coley said in his press conference, they are full of confidence now. They got momentum. They they got this bowling attack going well. You know. I haven't even seen Coley make runs yet. So when Coley makes runs and Sharma, all these guys make runs, yeah, yeah. I just think that Australia right now, it's very crucial. Yes, they have to play well this test match and get back. But uh, India, I think, it's like when we went to India before in 2004. Where mm. It seems like India's arrived here and they're in control. They've done all their homework. Okay. They're mm. very planned. They know what they do. Okay. And they're playing well. Right. Both of you seem to agree that India then stuck favourite here in the second test match as well. But Karthik, I'll come to you. Uh, just, you know, the way the first test match panned out, in the end, it's what, 31 run was the gap between the two teams. Then, then is it really that much of a difference between the two sides and, and Australia capable of making a comeback then? Yeah, of course. Look, they've always been hard as nails. You have to remember that they're a very proud sporting nation. They're a very outdoorsy nation. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. And, and the thing is that they were, India was run very close on that surface. Uh, partly because of the fact that every bowler was tired uh, by the time they finished. I'm mm. assuming that Ashwin has bowled enough overs in that mm. game and he didn't look as potent as he did in the first innings, possibly because of whatever injury he was carrying. Right. So all those things uh, allowed mm. Australia to come back. But having said that, a win is a win. It's not about the margin of the win. Mm -hmm. Yes, Australia will be very happy with the way they fought back. Mm. But at the end of the day, for India also, you have to sometimes scrap hard. And when you go abroad, and as mm. uh, Marto rightly pointed out, the first test match is so, so, so crucial. So, and if you've made a big tick box there, you go into the next game because it's the other team which is doing the catching up, not you. Okay. So, it, it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to this new ground and what that pitch has got on offer. Because the drop-in wickets, you can't predict. Even the, okay. even the last one, what do you know? Does it have the natural wear and tear? It spun from first day. But as the game progressed, it became slower and slower. So, okay. it'll be interesting how the new Perth pitch plays. All right. Bit of an enigma how the ground or that pitch is going to play like. But but we will give you a sneak peek uh, based on the matches that have happened so far on this particular ground. There was that one Sheffield Shield game that happened. And, and that's the difference there. This is pace versus spin in that one game that was played at this new stadium. And, and if you look at that, I mean, of course, more wickets for the pace bowlers. But I'm also assuming because the pace bowlers did most of the bowling on that particular day. But the average actually gives you an idea which is almost about the same. Uh, Damien, coming to you, uh, spinners also can get a lot of purchase. Looking at that, an average of 23, not bad for a spinner on a fast, bouncy track. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, even the old days of the Wacker, Shane Warne loved the ball of the Wacker. There was bounce and there was spin. I mean, obviously, of those stats, yes, pace is going to play a crucial part. And um, But spinners will come into it. I mean, Lyon, um, Ashwin. But um, it's, uh, to me, it's the batting lineups. You know, I, I think it's it's the difference between that right now is that the Indian band lineup is established. They, they got people have been there. They know how to make big runs. I think the Australian lineup at the moment is still trying to find how to bat and how to bat in Test cricket. Like Finch at the start. Um, they, they, these are guys now playing Test cricket, saying they need to bat a long time. You need to make 400 plus. Mm. Can you do that? I mean, and and obviously I think that's the difference. That the bowling attacks, but the batting the batting attacks. I think India has it over. And we haven't seen the full Indian batting line, have we, make yeah. runs? And at some stage of these test matches, it will it will click and they'll make big runs. That's right. the trouble for Australia. Yeah, well, that's an interesting point Damien makes. You know, even the first innings, we saw the top order collapse. Second innings, the Indian batting lineup, the lower order actually threw their wickets away. So, we haven't really seen the Indian batting lineup perform to potential. But we were talking about that one Sheffield Shield game that has happened. And who was the star in that particular game? No, it wasn't a Stark or a Hazelwood, none of those fast bowlers. It was this man, Nathan Lyon. He picked up seven wickets, a uh, total of eight wickets were taken by spinners. Seven of them were picked up by Nathan Lyon. Uh, I take this to a spinner on our panel. Uh, Karthik, he's going to be another crucial. We keep talking about this being a fast pitch, but this is the man to watch out for. Look, uh, you've seen Shane Vaughan and every time he bowled, you always got a feeling that something's going to happen. That happened with Vaseem and Vakar. 
Yeah. And with Nathan Lyon, I think that's what you feel. He's the most beautiful bowler to watch hmm. currently because, look, he doesn't say that I've got this dusra, tisra, fourth, hmm. fifth, sixth and mystery balls. Hmm. He comes and bowls conventional, <clears throat> really sorry guys, hmm. conventional off spin, ball after ball, gives that ball a rip, the body goes behind the ball and then the natural variation takes place. He gets the ball to drop, he gets the ball to spin, he gets the ball to swerve both ways. And then he's got that attacking mindset and also the sly smile which a spinner needs. And I think on a surface which offers bounce, that's all you need as a, as a spinner. The rest is in your own hands. And every time you watch Lion, what Bishan Bedi used to say, what is a spinner? Who's a spinner? A spinner is somebody who spins the ball. And that's okay. exactly what you see from him. So he is going to be a threat on any surface. Okay, Nathan Lyon's going to be a threat, but there's not great news for the Indian camp because the spinner that they had who was a threat in that first test match, R. Ashwin, unfortunately, has been ruled out of this particular match because of a side strain. This is the 13-man squad that India have declared. Two people are out already, and that is Rohit Sharma, R. Ashwin, both of them are injured. Haruma Vihari comes in in that particular squad. Umesh Yadav now making the 13 as well, and so you have Ravindra Jadeja also making making the 13. So it's going to be interesting whether India go in with five bowlers, whether they go in the four bowlers. If they go with four bowlers, will they have a spinner or it's going to be a four-pace attack for the Indian team? Plenty of questions there. Uh, uh, Karthik, first, I I'd like you to pick your 11. Uh, what are the changes you'll make based on those two injuries now? Yeah, as I said, uh, Ravi Ashwin has got an abdominal strain, which mm. he must have carried from the previous game. Mm. Uh, I was told that Rohit Sharma is not well. Yeah. Um, and he's he also got an injury. Back, yeah. Obviously, Prithvi Shah has not been picked, so mm. his ankle has not healed. Mm. And anyways, I was not going to think uh, if I was given the option of mm. picking a side, if all of them were fit, I wouldn't have changed the side. Mm -hmm. But having said that, now that you've, you're presented with the situation, mm. I would pick uh, Ravindra Jareja for Ravi Ashwin because he gives you a lot of control with the bowling. And you never okay. know, come day three, day four, if there's something on the surface, he'll definitely exploit. Also, you have to remember, he can bat. He's batted well at the oval. In whatever test matches he has got, he's just got a hundred at home. So he's also brimming with confidence. And the ne next man I'll pick, and this is only because of the fact I'm not picking a batsman in place of uh, Rohit Sharma. And the reason why I'm doing that is that it's a, it's it's just a quick turnover between the two test matches. And as in the second game, uh, second innings, the bowlers were looking a bit tired. And if, as you showed me at the beginning of the program, if the wicket is going to have some amount of grass. Mm -hmm. I will always have Bhuvaneshwar Kumar because he, mm -hmm. he brings a lot of control. He can get the ball to swing. He can also bat. Mm -hmm. So I've got two bowlers who can bat quite a bit and also they take care of the bowling because it's been a quick turnover. Bumra, Shami, all of them were tired. Okay, interesting. Uh, Damien, to you, R. Ashwin there missing out. Uh, you know, Ravinder Jadeja comes in and that is what, I, we don't know if he's going to be playing, but uh, Murli's picked uh, Ravinder Jadeja in his squad. Uh, do you think he's going to be as effective? Because, you know, with, with Ashwin, uh, you have the left-handers in the Australian batting lineup to really exploit. Uh, I was looking at the Australian batting lineup, what they've got four in the top six, uh, four in the top seven uh, lefties with a left arm spinner coming in. They, they'd be happy, the Aussie camp at the moment with R. Ashwin now? Yeah. I mean, I, I'd, I'd love Ashwin to be out. I mean, I, I don't want to face him. I don't know how you face him. So, I think it's like anything, isn't it? An injury, it's like being Shane Warnes out for us or Adam Gilchrist, I think, a major player and a major spinner. Um, but does it give the Australian team confidence? I, I think inside the Australian cricket team right now, they're trying to work out what their best side is, how they play, mm -hmm. um, and, and just, just, just got to stick to the basics and make runs. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, you look at the Indian side and go, OK, someone's injured, but really we need to... Play it, play a certain way. I mean, and mm -hmm. work out what we're going to do. We're not making enough runs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, a bowling attack a certain way. So Ashwin, quality bowler. Um, mm -hmm. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, actually, when you win, you want actually the best players to play. So, yeah. but it's it's a good advantage for us at the moment. Whether we win though, I okay. don't think so. Okay, let's just it'll make um, we'll win anymore. Right, just to reiterate uh, the impact that R. Ashwin has on this Indian team. And these are interesting graphics that we've got for you. And this is without Ashwin, the Indian team hasn't run very well uh, in overseas condition. If we take a look at that, in the with Ashwin in the 27 matches that they've played, the Indian team bowling averages at 32. Without Ashwin, that average, average goes up to 40.64. So he does really make an impact uh, when, uh, you know, the Indian team is uh, playing overseas. Also, India has just won, what, two out of the 10 test matches overseas when R. Ashwin is not playing. Uh, uh, Karthik, to you, big loss then for India? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Look, he is again somebody very, not very similar to uh, uh, Nathan Lyon, but he's got that control. He's got the variation. 
Yeah. He's also got that attacking mindset to bowl. Mm. And also, you have to remember, he adds a lot of value with the bat as well. Mm. And at the end of the day, if you've got a good spinner in your team, what that mm. allows the fast bowlers is to stay fresh because he's going to turn his arm over from one end. Mm. Uh, obviously, if he's good enough, then obviously he's going to pick wickets for the team as well. So, uh, the, the added responsibility on the seamers or the workload or the burden comes down a bit. And then the seamers can... Uh, can be rotated and used very nicely. But if that's not the case, if you don't have somebody who can offer you control or offer the number of overs which a spinner is required, whether it's day one, day two, day three, day four, mm. as a spinner, you need to understand your role on a day one pitch, a day two pitch. And I think that is something yeah. which Ravi Chandran Ashwin has also understood. The first time he went, his mindset was only to attack even on the first day, which doesn't happen. I think yeah. county cricket and the fact that he has travelled abroad uh, quite a few times now, tells you that, yes, he has understood it's not about just attacking bowling all the time. And that's one of the reasons why India has done well with him. Okay, patience. That's an attribute that he's picked up, uh, as uh, uh, Murli Karthik was saying, after having played county cricket, after having played so much of test cricket. A quick word on Rohit Sharma. Damien, I'd like to come to you on that particular uh, subject. He's had a stop-start sort of a test career. Now he's injured, he's out. Uh, if this pitch was to play anything like the old Vaka pitch, do you think this would have been the perfect place for him to relaunch his test career, considering he's a stroke maker? And, you know, in a pitch like uh, Perth, it can be tough for batsmen to survive, but then when they get going, especially the stroke makers, this is the place to make runs. I was looking at some stats what some of the fastest test hundreds have been made on this ground, on the previous ground. Yeah, and, and, yeah no, no, I agree with you. I mean, I think that one of the hardest things about the Wacker is that it, it, the first half an hour of your batting is really tough. Okay, yeah. You walk in there and it's bouncy and it's quick and you think, how do I get a run? But if then you get in and you start making runs, it's a great wicket to bat on. The outfield's fantastic. And straight makers do. We've seen all the, all the Adam Gilchrist, all these guys make runs. And look, I love watching Sean bat. It's one of those people who like, it's like certain people in your career you look at and go, I just want them to make runs. Even if I'm playing against them, they just look great doing it. So, I mean, I think as all players go through patches. Um, now, the drop-in wicket, it's not the wicket. This drop-in wicket, who knows how it's going to play in a test match. That, that, that's the hard thing to go. How's it going to play for five days? Um, but yes, I think like certain players, mm. which are talented, if they can get through these periods, these stroke makers can take the game away and win test matches. And I think he's one of those people. Okay, uh, he'll have to wait for his opportunity then, uh, because this test is definitely out. Okay, we spoke about the Indian playing 11. Damien, I'll come to you uh, for the Australian 11. What would you like to see the Australian team go with? Um, well, I, look... I, as a player who's been picked and dropped, as we know, really, that I, I like. If you're playing the first test match, you get the second test match. So yeah. I actually like the side going forward. But that, that maybe it's a selfish thing. It's a, it's a hard thing to work out what's going on. Yeah. Um, but I think from a selector's point of view, and yeah. and and you know, putting faith in players, you go, look, this is the test squad we picked. This is the team for the first test match. This is the second test match. And then, you know, you back the guys in. There might be injuries, obviously, with Tim Payne with his finger. Will he play? Won't he play? I'm not sure. Um, as Murley said before, I agree on even quick wickets with bowlers. I think the spinner plays a big part yeah. um, with the quicks to give them rest. Even though the wicket might be amazing at the wacker in the old days, mm. you still need someone to rest up the bowlers, bowl into the wind, different scenarios. So, um, for me, I go the same side okay. um, and then see what happens. Okay, you're going with the same side uh, based on, you know, as you said, you know, give confidence to the team. If they played the first test match, allow them to play another test match. If there was a ground that you'd be tempted to play, Mitchell Marsh, could this be the one? Because in a, you know, a track like this, a uh, fast bowling all-rounder is what you need. India don't have it at the moment with Hardik Pandya injured, but, but Australia have that in Mitchell Marsh. Could they be tempted to go with him? They could be. Look, I, I'm a big fan of Mitchell Marsh. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Glenn Maxwell as well. All these, all these players that so much talent. Um, it, it, it depends on the scenarios, the selectors, the captain, the coach, how they want to go. I mean, I think Mitchell Marsh is is, is a great you know, all-rounder, but yeah. it, it's doing it. He hasn't done it yet. You know, it's also performing in these moments. You know, it's like saying Glenn Maxwell, like amazing talent. But you've got to be consistent in what you do at this level. Um, so it becomes a confidence thing. Is, does Justin Langer want that? Does the selectors want that? Does Tim Payne want that? What What is Tim Payne? I think, which I love. What does the captain feel comfortable with? What does the captain think is going to win him a Test match? And I, I go with that. All right, uh, quick word then. Uh, I'm going to take predictions, and this is not going to be match prediction. My prediction that I'm going to be asking you is how many days of oh, test? Oh, how many How many days of the Test match going to last? I can't hear. <laughs> uh, how many days of the Test match going to last? I'm not asking you who's winning this one. Damien. For me? Yeah. Uh, oh, Australians watching this coverage? I'm not sure. Australia. Oh, yes, they are. I'm, I'm, We're global. 
I'm, I'm picking India, okay? Well, it'll be a, it might be a draw. It could be a draw this wicket. Who knows this wicket? Oh, I, 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 oh, interesting. I don't think Australia's going to win, no. Oh, interesting, he says. Okay, he's picked India. Also says could be a draw. Uh, but never thought someone would say that. I mean, I'm just re going by the reports. They say, what, three-day test match? Uh, uh, some are even Who's saying... saying three days? Who's saying three days? Well, I just read a, I read a report on an Australian website. I'd forward that link to you very soon, right <laughs> after the show. Okay, Murli Karthik, to you. How many days? I've got no idea. I've seriously got no idea. And I'm so, I was so happy that a yeah. test match lasted five days and it was yeah. gripping yeah. In, a, in a different way because there was a lot of, yeah. uh, uh, what should I say, control uh, by both those, both sides. They kept fighting hard. Mm -hmm. I would like to see a test match like that. Enough of those three-day, four-day games where mm -hmm. people are throwing away wickets. Or, um, so it's, it's good to see a five-day game. I would still love to see a five-day game. Okay, the reason... Murli Karthik sitting on the fence is because from tomorrow he's going yes. to be here he's in the studio. The he's no, going to be no here idea. in the studio. Got, seriously, no, when, when, <laughs> our, when our local <laughs> Perth man no, doesn't gonna have win. any idea, no, how do you expect somebody sitting far but away he stuck his neck having out. any idea what the wicket's going to do there? But David if I saw the wicket, then I could give a prediction. I will show you the wicket. I mean, I all be yeah, able to thousands of miles away. That is a makeup. When the makeup comes off, what do you know what's going to happen there? Okay, we'll have him here in the studio discussing for the next five days. So, will we have Damien Martin joining us live from Australia. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. That's all that we have for you on ESPN Cricket for Match Day. For the moment, looking forward to another exciting test match in Perth.